Hello there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV and we've got another video review for you. And this time it's Die Young for PS4 and this review comes from our network website pureplaystation.com. Check them out for the latest news and reviews. A code was provided by the publisher. Die Young was one of those rare games that completely blindsided me. Having never heard of it before, it landed on my desk for review. I quickly fired up the trailer to see what I was in for. Doing that didn't really do anything other than confuse me, purely because the trailer I watched makes the game look like something of a mashup between a daytime soap and a survival horror. So starting the game for the first time, I was a little bit unsure of what to expect. Luckily, the game lands solidly in the survival horror genre. Waking up inside a well, it's apparent from the onset that things have gone sideways. For one, you're in a well, so there's that. For another, you have woken up separated from your friends, with nothing to aid you but your wits and a hand-drawn map left by a mysterious stranger. As far as game openings go, and overlooking the whole animated soap opera intro, Die Young throws you in at the deep end, and I have to be honest, I was hooked straight away. Die Young is a great survival horror RPG that gets so much of what it attempts right, it's easy to forgive what feels like a slight misstep in how the story is set up in cutscenes, which is really the game's weakest link. Thankfully, these animated cutscenes are rare, only popping up whenever you find a shelter and choose to rest. As a means to an end, they lay the groundwork for much of the story, but they do feel very cheesy in their delivery. With that out of the way, Die Young is easily one of the best survival horror games I have played, and I use the term survival horror loosely. At its core, Die Young is a survival sim with horror elements. Much of your time will be spent scrounging for resources and crafting equipment as you explore the island and delve deeper into the game's story. The few horror aspects are mainly implied as opposed to outright jump scares, and this suits me fine because I'm a bit of a pussy. Exploring the island is enjoyable and Die Young does a fantastic job of drip feeding you resources and equipment during the course of the main campaign. Crafting materials are easy enough to come by, but when you start the game you don't really have anything to hold them with, so you're limited as to what you can carry. This is true as well for the items that you find, as initially you have to make do with what you find lying around, prioritising items in order of what you need in that moment. Your inventory space is upgradable once you find a backpack and a utility belt, and this natural progression feels right. There is no skill wheel or experience points to spend here. As you progress through the game, Daphne learns how to craft items using the materials she has to hand, based on the items you've already found. Find a knife? Great. Daphne can now use scrap metal and a few bits of string to make one. This system is subtle, but it works incredibly well to make you feel like you are toughening up naturally, and Daphne goes from feeling like a helpless victim to a resourceful survivor without the game bashing you over the head with it. As well as inventory management, there are separate gauges for health, stamina, and thirst. Health and thirst are obvious and can be improved by drinking or eating at campfires. Combat 2 feels quite satisfying, if a little simple. Using a melee system, Die Young literally has you start empty-handed and afraid, before you can find items that can be quickly used as weapons. Enemies can be animals that, when you kill them, you're rewarded with their meat or hides, and you can use them for crafting. Or you can come across humans that wander the island aimlessly or on patrol. Whether you hide or take them out is up to you, as each encounter during the first few hours of the game can be avoided if you want to. Melee does feel meaty, with animals yelping in pain or humans shouting out, and although they can all be quite easily beaten round the head with whatever weapon you have, you can also block and dodge incoming attacks. There is a kind of finesse to the combat that develops as you make your way through the story. When I started, I was hiding from everyone, but before long, I was able to quickly assess who I could take on and who I needed to hide from using my current skills and equipment. The level design is some of the best I have seen in an open world game. The island itself feels huge and expansive, but each area somehow feels unique, from climbing a mountain or navigating a rundown farm. 
The island is made up of plenty of small areas that can be explored, and some of the natural areas do feel quite real. And without any intrusive HUD elements, you quickly learn to rely on the map and compass to work your way around. Da Young does employ a few other gaming elements, such as a quest tracker that you can use to track your current quest or point you in the right direction. But this too feels quite unobtrusive and a natural addition to the game, with exploration feeling rewarding as a result. All of these elements are all well and good, but without a decent story to tie them together, Da Young would be dead on arrival. Luckily, the mysterious situation you find yourself in quickly draws you in and is told as you explore, through letters littering the abandoned buildings or by Daphne narrating depending on what you encounter. My only other complaint, aside from the cutscenes, is that climbing can be a bit of a nightmare. There was more than one occasion where I was required to jump to a ledge or clamber up to a beam, only for me to miss my jump and fall to my death. Dai Young uses a checkpoint system in the game that auto-saves every time you use one of the many campfires you encounter across the island, so it was never really much of a problem, but it can get frustrating at particular points in the game. Dai Young is a fantastic example of a survival sim done right. A beautiful setting that feels massive and interesting to explore, a story that is told naturally as you progress, and skills that feel earned rather than rewarded for hitting an arbitrary number. If you enjoy open world survival sims, Die Young is nothing short of a bargain. And that's the end of this video review. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you know what to do. Go down below, hit the like, subscribe, and give the bell a tickle too, so that you're notified whenever we have new stuff. Don't forget the info box down there, you will find our socials and our supporters page if you're feeling generous. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye!